publisher of Biz to Biz with Joy, a weekly show where I interview men and women in business who are looking to connect with you, sharing their philosophy, platform, and how they serve you. Stay tuned. We love good company. See you soon. Cheers. It's going. It says hello, hello. Ah, one, two, three, four, five. Welcome. Welcome to Biz to Biz with Joy, Grow Your Business in Style. Every Tuesday night, we come to you with a leading lady or a gent, and we discuss with you any and everything that evolves around business. And every week, I bring you a phenomenal, fantastic guest, and tonight is no exception. It's always good to have you here, and welcome for stopping by and sharing and spending some time with us. Tonight, we're going to talk about something that's important to everyone no matter where you are, whether you're a beginner, you've been at it for a while, or you've been at it forever. It's all about branding and content. So without further ado, I want to bring up our guest tonight. Her name is Tresa Chambers, and we're going to discuss Brandon. I said Tresa, I meant Teresa. Teresa, she knows I'm bad with names, so please forgive, but welcome. It's so good to have you here. Hi, Joy. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here because what you do is something that all of us need, whether we're newbies, whether we've been doing it for a little while or whether we've been at it forever. We need to perfect, as even though there's no perfection, our brand. So tell us about branding and how you came to do the work that you're doing now. Sure. Thanks. Well, um, I... I was into branding, actually, I guess before branding was a trendy thing. Um, I, you know, my first career actually was in journalism, but uh, I really started to get into branding when I worked in a licensing company. Uh, I actually, you know, you may remember uh, years ago, there was the Goosebumps books and the Goosebumps book series, and there were television shows. And so I worked in the licensing division um, of the children's book packager that created Goosebumps. And uh, I actually set up the uh, consumer packaged goods department. And that is where I started to learn about branding because um, at the time we were licensing everything with the Goosebumps brand. So that was at really almost 20 years ago. And then, yeah, so from there, I just went from there and it's become a passion of mine, understanding that creativity um, and the way that people's ideas can come to life and then be monetized. So you want to make money and you want to have great ideas. And if there's a way to bring that together, then that's really exciting. Now, did that come before you started to work with Time Magazine? Because I know you were with Time Magazine for quite a while. Was that before Time Magazine or after? That was actually after Time. Time was, uh, I started at Time uh, shortly after I moved to New York City, um, uh-huh. after, shortly after I graduated from college, um, University of Virginia, and left Virginia and moved to New York. Um, and within a year, I was working in the editorial department of Time Magazine. And that was really exciting as well. So, you know, working at one of a global brand before yeah. branding was even a thought in my mind, but it was just a part of um, what I was drawn to um, the reputation and the quality of the content and the great people. It's fascinating how we all come to do what we do, uh, Teresa. It really is. Tell us a little bit about your branding now, how vital. We, we all know and we don't know, and sometimes you're so deep in the forest, you don't really get to see the trees. So even though there are many out here who maybe are big into branding, tell us how you see branding and why it's so vital and important for everyone. Give us some sure. there. So, you know, branding is, um, it is, it's become something that, everybody can embrace now because of the proliferation of uh, content platforms where anybody can develop a brand, build a brand, become a brand. And so with that, it's really important to know how you can differentiate yourself and what those characteristics are that uniquely are distinctive about you and can make your brand stand out, right? Because um, just, you know, there's a hundred 
thousand bloggers, right? There's vloggers and there's all kinds of people in every space. And so it's really important to figure out how you can differentiate yourself and stand out among all of those folks. Uh, so that's part of it as a personal brand. And then for business, of course, it really is about defining that brand to reach an audience um, and a target um, in, e in either way, case. Um, and it really allows you to make sure that you are speaking correctly, clearly um, to your defined audience and ultimately getting the results that you want, which is absolutely more business and more sales. Absolutely. I align what you're talking about with uh, styling, which for me, working as a style and leadership coach and a signature style specialist, I say how you show up matters and you're saying it in a different way, how you represent you, how you show up, what you present. And then you said something else, which is a real good trigger that all of us need to know. What about you allows you to stand out and be separate from all the others out there who are doing the same thing that you do? That's right. So how do you help them, Teresa, discover that? How do you help them align with whatever that might be? Well, the first thing that I do and is really important for anyone to do is to really do um, what I call an audit yes. of your brand, right? Yes. So if you're starting out even, um, you have things that you're bringing to the table, which is why you're wanting to start whatever venture it is that you're on. Mm -hmm. And then of course, uh, if you're farther along in your business, then you already have some evidence of what you do and what you, what it is about your brand that's unique and different. And so it's important that first step is to do that audit, do that assessment of what it is that is unique about you, what are all the characteristics, and then decide if you want to amplify that combination of all of those, or if you just want to really focus on a few of those key characteristics that define your brand and then put that forward. I get that. I like that. I really comprehend what you're saying. And yet, here's what I know. Please speak to this, myself included, up to a point here. Sometimes the people that you're working with might be extremely talented, gifted, and all of that, but they're not quite sure about what amplifies them up. What is that innate zone of genius that they have? So again, the question would be, once you do this audit, you're able to help them to define what that is. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, so helping to define what those characteristics are that make the brand. So the essence of the brand, yes. as well as the value. So there's the essence and your values, and also the pillars, the things that you stand for and that you are uncompromising on are the things that really kind of are the foundation of your brand. You know, a lot of folks talk about uh, the fact that your brand is not a logo. And uh, that's true, but a, co a logo is a component. Um, yeah. and it plays a role. However, because it really has to speak when you're not present, really. That's what the strength of a brand does. It speaks when you're not present because uh, you can't sell, you can't be there and selling to every individual customer all the time. So having a well-defined brand and those components that you can put out into the world will allow you to be able to not have to be present all the time and let your brand speak for you. Yes. So everything has to, from the head to toe, from the beginning inception to the end, has to represent what your brand is and what you're offering, what your service or your product might be. Everything about your branding has to, in one way or another, represent that. That's what you're saying. That's exactly right, Joy. And one of the key things that a lot of folks get lost on yes. is the content component, right? So these days, everybody talks about how they have to be on social media. They have to do social media. Well, what does that really mean? And if your brand is present on social media, how is it showing up? What kind of content are you putting out there? Does it align with your brand? Those are questions that you need to ask. And then if you're trying to connect with your customer, you also have to think about where your customer is. 
a lot of folks are on Facebook, for example, and there's nothing wrong with Facebook and it's appropriate for a lot of different types of brands. However, it may make more sense if you're an artist for, per se, you might be on Instagram, which is a more visual platform, right? right? Or if you are like me and you're marketing to businesses, then LinkedIn is probably a better option for you. And that doesn't mean that you have to do one platform exclusively, but if you wanna grow your brand, you start with one and then you go to the next and the next, but be strategic about it and look at the one that's going to be the optimal uh, platform for you to really amplify your brand and connect with your target audience. I think that's very powerful and for numerous reasons, because in many ways, even though I've been fussing around for a while, I'm still kind of somewhat of a newbie. And what I find a friend said to me not too long ago, and it hurt, but yet it was the truth. What you said, everything that you said about the content and branding yourself and everybody doing the same and finding the right audience for your target market, because we all get caught up initially in the beginning with that bright, shiny object of whatever that might be. We want to dabble in everything. And that's a waste of time and energy. And some of us, it takes a while to get there and others not. But we need a branding consultant coach like you to allow us to see the path of where we need to go and where we need to be. And finding your target audience, you mentioned, and then to a lot of people, everybody kind of does the same thing. So you're talking about that individualistic differentiating difference that everybody has that has to be found so that when you do get to your target audience and the people that you are there to serve, you're at home with them and vice versa. And yeah. you help people to do that by making sure that they know what their zone of genius is. And then you allow them to find their target audience. What are some of the tools that you use that you tools and keys and components that you use to help one to do that? Sure. Well, I want to go back a little bit to what you said and just kind of uh, offer a, an alternative perspective on what people do when they start out. Yes. Most of the time, people start out by deciding that this is something, they're doing something that they want to do. And they put it out there and they say, well, I'm going to do this because I like doing this. Well, that's great, except if you're going to sell it, then that means it has to be something that somebody wants to buy. So wow. it's very, very important to think about that. So the shiny things are great, but that's about you. Um, yes. It's not necessarily about your customer. Absolutely. So really important. And so what I do uh, with my clients is that I will do uh, what I'll, what I call a muse map. So doing mm -hmm. that audit and identifying the characteristics of the brand. So going through that process and then really developing a plan that's and a strategy that's based on what the goals are of that particular business or that individual are. And then um, I will work with them on identifying the appropriate platforms, um, the way that they can put, put their brand forth that differentiates them. And I find that a lot of times it really is um, interesting and important to have events and engagements, which of course, in the time that we're in now, a lot of those things are online, but it's important to connect with your customers in person as much as you can. But also with that, think about you have to think strategically about where you show up. And I think that more than anything, if you that phrase is really key to what I do is I help my clients figure out how they show up and where they show up. I like that. I like that very much. And, you know, you spoke to something there that's very paramount for here and now this pandemic that we're all in yes. more, or less, more or less really because most of us are working out of this box, whichever box it might be. And so it still matters how you show up and not only how you show up, but the people that you're targeting to and the people that you're relating to and how you're relating to them, their message. And what you said is really, uh, Teresa, it's really, really vital because I think a lot of people do start out with what's important to them, but you have to segue if, if it's your zone of genius to what's important to the people that you want to serve. How are you going to serve them? So when that becomes the case, how do you segue that person 
to that outlook, that mindset? Well, I think that the most important thing is to make that assessment. So I work with my clients on developing a persona for their ideal customer. Ah. And that way you always are thinking about that person, that one individual person that obviously is replicated ideally to at least, I would say, 10,000 um, customers. But really, if you can drill home to that one ideal customer that you think is interested and you can bring them along the sales funnel, right, from your brand awareness mm -hmm. to developing an interest in what you have to offer to developing a preference and then finally purchasing, right? So that's the, that's the process of getting a customer um, to purchase from you. They have to know you, they have to be interested in you, they have to prefer you over your competitors, uh -huh. and then they gotta be willing to spend the money to come out of their pocket ultimately for what you have. What do you find might be the weakest link in getting someone to understand and to segue into that outlook and that mindset. What, what would you say propels a person to maybe hold back for whatever reason? Because again, like we started out, they're not quite sure, but you're supporting them and discovering that aspect of themselves that's going to connect and relate to their avatar, their target audience. Well, I think that the actually the most important thing is that people focus a lot on what they don't have. They focus, focus on the lack and not on the abundance that they have, which is really important. So if you start out thinking about, I'm going to do this, um, but I don't have this and I don't have, I don't have money for this, or I can't, you know, it's going to cost me this, or it's going to cost me that that is where people get hemmed up. So they think about the how before they've decided really and gotten clear on the what. Ah, uh, Teresa, you got it. Um, you it. Yeah. yeah. And so once they do that, once you once once we work together and just really get clear on what it is that you are trying to do and what it is that matters to your customer, then the how is opened up. You have more opportunities and you can think more broadly about what that can look like. And you will be surprised how you, I mean, there are lots of businesses out there. There's a lot of money available in the world. Um, I am someone who believes in absolute abundance and you know, whether, whatever that originates from, the yeah. fact of the matter is, is that we should all know this in reality now, because what happened last year Yes. When the pandemic hit and people couldn't go to work, suddenly $3 trillion was released into our economy. There is always abundance. And yes, now I will also speak as a person of color. We know that the access historically has been a barrier for us. But that being said, we see the evidence that we can find a way. We see people who overcome those challenges. Yes. yes. It all starts with that mindset and you know the unwillingness to give up. And I am, like I said, as a person of color, as a black woman, I think about my ancestors and I know what they went through. And I I, you know, I stand on their shoulders and Listen. I have strength and I know that, you know, I can get through a lot of things and if it was hard for them and they survived with well, surely i can absolutely Teresa, Teresa, you gave us some real good nuggets and some really profound insights there and there's a lot to take in but some of the things that you said not some all of the things but what stuck is i think most people come to the table i myself am guilty with technology and saying what you lack but it's not what you lack it's what you are really excel in your your zone of genius that's where you concentrate and then all of this other all of these other pearls of wisdom that you share with us that's it it's really that simplistic and we make it a little bit more complex i'm going to take a quick quick break I'm going to put you in the green room don't go anywhere i'll be back in just a second 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I just love it. You know why? Because all of us, we're in this pandemic still. And many of us, most of us are making the best of it. Yet it is a very attempting, trying time for all of us. And yet these pearls of wisdom that were shared when it comes to your branding, because so many more people are coming now to work in this box, to present themselves, to show and tell what they do through this medium. And it means that you have to be more on target with what you're doing and who you are going to serve. That's what's important. Now, every Tuesday night, I come to you and I bring you a male or female who's going to share with you their journey and all the things that they're about. But what I want you to do is remember that you have to pop in the comments, biz, B-I-Z, and you'll get your freebie, your brochure, which gives you some good nuggets and tools about business. And also, if you are a female or even if you're a male and you're a lady, so to speak, join my Facebook group, Leading Ladies, Leaving Legacies. And remember that it's all here for you. Teresa, her email, her website, and her name will be floating through. Make sure you get that information and connect with her because the whole intention is that you make the connection so that you, even if this is not your arena, you might know someone who might be interested in branding and getting the best content possible out there. And this is a person that you would want to connect with. So let's go back and find out a little bit more. Let me ask you this, Teresa, branding and content. When it comes to content, you spoke to it a wee bit earlier, contingent upon the person and what they're doing and how they're branding themselves. How do you get them to align with the best content that's going to appeal to the people that they're reaching out to connect with? Well, the first thing that to, that you really must do is that you do a content audit, just like you're doing a brand audit. You also yes. have to do a content audit. Mm -hmm. if, if you really think about it, there's so much that you've already created that is a part of your brand identity and we do things once and then we file them away in a computer file or we present something and we file it in a drawer um, but at the end of the day you got to come back to that and you don't have to keep making things new you have to go back and remind yourself of what the essence of that that message that you wanted to put out there is and of course if you need to adapt it that's great but you have the foundational content a lot of times you do now if you want to change brand your brand that's a whole other challenge i worked at a corporate a tech company and we rebranded the entire corporation it was a global company and that's a huge undertaking but it can be done and several brands global brands have done that so that's an option too but the essence of your message is probably in something that you already have that you just have put away or forgotten about so go oops go back to have a huge list of options i mean you know i did this practice and you know i've been working you know doing all kinds of uh speaking and writing and presentations over numbers of years. And so I had pages and pages of content to go back to. So I think <laughs> I that's know. really important. You forget that you have done all the things that you've done. It's um, true. And it's really important to remind yourself that you have great content. So I think that's a great place to start. That's that's spot on, uh, Teresa, because I have just done that myself, went back and said, oh, my God, look at all the stuff I've accumulated here over the past year. It's amazing what happens when it comes to you going out and you're doing your speaking engagements and so on. The women and, and, and predominantly do you, you work with men and women, but predominantly. Absolutely. Women, yeah, I work with women and men and I've probably worked with about an equal number of both. Ah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Because even though it's our time, meaning for women, we're not uh, in any way putting men on the back burner because we would not be here without them. So let's get that straight out in the in the loophole. What are some of the, the pivotal points or questions that men and women come to you with about branding? What are some of their concerns about how they can get better. I, that's what you do. We know that. But people come initially and they have questions, they have concerns before they make that initial decision. 
to work with you or even just to pick your brain, what are some of the things that people ask you about branding and content? Well, most of the time people come to me um, and this is really kind of the, a core aspect of my brand. People come to me because they want to find ways to get visibility in front of the audiences that they're targeting. So finding unique opportunities to have a, a, a presence in front of their audience. So as a result of that, I have done things like um, I've worked with a personal stylist who wanted to reach a new market and we produced a radio show and we produced a day party together. And we built the following that way. Um, it was a very successful event in Miami. And we since then have also done a couple of other partnerships where we have done work in Miami as well um, at Art Basel. I've worked, I was focused for a while on creatives, working with creative entrepreneurs in particular. Yes. Um, so that's a focus. I work with a gentleman who it, who was a visual, who is a visual artist, uh -huh. and um, I partnered with a nonprofit organization uh, to secure some funding from Microsoft, and uh, that led to the artist actually creating art in the Microsoft Store on their devices. So thinking about unique ways that. Uh, my clients can get visibility for their, for in, you know, in front of their customers is something that I really right. specialize in is really thinking about those unique ways, um, the ways that the brands can stand out more. Teresa, good yeah. answer. You gave, <laughs> you gave me the first comment out of your mouth. You gave me the word that I wanted to hear. And I know the people in the audience will want to hear. You said visibility. Yes, that's, that's right. what they come for num for numerous reasons because they haven't been able to do that yet. Now let's end on a fun note somewhat because time flies here. It really does. It does. Let's, let, you mentioned a, a word before and I did as well. And we kind of piggyback on each other, but you mentioned about visibility and how you show up. It matters and your branding and your content and the audience that you're going out for. It's what they need, not what you need. So, how you show up, one style, not so much the exterior, but everything. How do you allow or let someone know that everything about them is important in their branding? That how they show up does matter? Well, um, I think that the, a lot of times it has to be, you know, you have to look at the evidence of the results that you're getting. Yes. So if you're not getting the results that you want, then it's there's a reason why and it is it could be one thing or it could be several things but first understanding that if you're not getting the results that you want there's something that you need to do different and we have to go through that whole process of really assessing all the different components um, there is no one answer. Everybody is unique and everybody brings something different to the table. Um, and so, you know, and because they're targeting different audiences, that also makes a difference. I do a lot of B2B. Um, my background mostly is B2B. And so, you know, being able to think about, you know, so having solutions, be solution oriented, which is what you do when you're trying to uh, help a business, you know, even right. small businesses, I'm bringing solutions to my clients uh, instead of a particular product. Uh, so that's something that's a differentiator. Yes, very good, very good stuff. Listen, we could go on and on and on yeah. here. Tell us, as we say so long for now, I never mm -hmm. say goodbye, what are some of the best nuggets, tips, tools that you can leave us with that will make us hungry to get to know more about how we can best brand ourselves and have the best content out there. What type of verbiage would you want to leave us with? What tips, what, anything at all that will benefit as, a, as an aside for someone? Maybe because, you know, there are a lot of new people who are coming on to online marketing now who are going to be doing all kinds of things. They've lost their jobs. They're coming into this market now to get into the stratosphere and make their evidence known. Yeah. What steps do you give them? What Because this pandemic has shaken up everything. 
and what you said earlier about going inside and getting out the best and all of that. But what can you leave us with that will give us elation, so to speak? So what I really think is important, especially at this time, but yes. what I realized a while ago is that if you can have create strategic partnerships, <sighs> you will be able to grow your business in a faster way. You will expose yourself to new audiences. You will have a support system and you will work with people, someone who's complimentary to you, at least one person. So understand that you don't have to do all of it. You need, a, you need at least one strategic partner. And a lot of times that's a really great way to bring business to you, but it also allows you to be able to give yourself and what you have um, in a comfortable and confident way. And at least there's one person who's by your side as you go on this venture. Um, you're not alone. You won't feel alone. And you'll see that you'll have a lot more progress and success a lot faster. I believe. Uh, Teresa, Teresa, you couldn't, you, I tell you, this is like really brilliant because for me, it's all about, it's not about me, but it's for everyone. It's about family, relationships, community. And when you say that you don't do anything alone and align yourself with some collaborative joint venture type of thing, that's where we are all headed more or less now. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those were good pearls of wisdom. May I say thank you? It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Joy. It's been a pleasure for me too. Thank you for allowing me to share on your platform. Completely my pleasure. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna put you in the green room and say so long, but I'll be with you in a second if you can just hang around for a minute or two. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Listen, branding, content, avatar, finding your market, all of that is essential. It's, it's an, a comp component that you cannot deny. And all of us need to align with someone who can help us to see and support us to seeing that zone of genius within ourselves so that we can make sure we're aligning with the people who need the services that we're offering. And there's no doubt that Teresa is going to be one of those for you. I hope that you will make the connection. The email, the website, the name, however you do it, follow, connect, send a Facebook message, but make sure you make the connection. This goes out through different uh, channels, Roku and Amazon Fire and Apple TV, ultimately in time. But until then, you can connect with her on Facebook and LinkedIn. It's always good to be with you. It's always a pleasure to have you here because as she said, Teresa said, none of us do anything alone and good relationships are important. So be mindful of that, wear the mask, take care, and do all that you can to stay well and to stay safe, looking after you first so that others can be cared for. Until we connect, and we will again soon. How about tomorrow night at 7? Same time, same station. So long for now, and thank you for being here. All the best. Cheers. We appreciate you. Every week you will meet professional men and women who stand out in the crowd, growing their business and style online. Join us each week. Want to be a guest? Let's make it happen. Connect with me on my website. All the best. Cheers.